Welcome to Salisbury University on the Air, a program highlighting the activities and the people of the campus. My name is Susan Purnell. With lectures, performances, and other special activities, Salisbury University commemorates African American History Month in February and beyond. Here to tell us about those events and more are Dr. April Logan, Assistant Professor of English, and Dr. Aston Gonzalez, Assistant Professor of History, co-chairs of SU's African American History Month Committee. First is Aston. So welcome, Aston. Thank you so much for having me. Good to see you and meet you. Likewise. Yeah. So we're going to talk a little bit about the month ahead, which is African American History Month. Tell us a little bit about what it's all about and when it was founded. Sure. So it started in 1926 by Carter G. Woodson, who was an African American activist and historian. And um, he essentially created the, the week at the time, which has now become a month, mm -hmm. um, as a way of remembering and honoring the contributions of African Americans over the course of US history. Mm -hmm. uh, because at that time, he recognized that a lot of African American history had been suppressed or ignored. Um, and so he tried to make sure that we all know. It's true, the because it wasn't it. even in most of the textbooks about right. history. That's exactly. very true. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so usually there's a central theme or topic. What is that this year? So this year the, the organization that Dr. Woodson founded, the Association for the Study of African American Life and mm -hmm. History, um, it has its annual theme, its national theme this year is African Americans in Times of War. So we're adopting that at mm -hmm. SU. Great. Um, the first event is with author Ronit Stahl. Mm -hmm. Certainly fits that topic. Um, what's she going to be speaking about? She'll be speaking about um, chaplains who served in the U.S. military. And she's especially interested in speaking about how chaplains will be um, or have been very um, important to the ways that our country talks about race mm -hmm. and also integrates both uh, the state and religion at the same time during mm -hmm. these really tense moments in our history. Right. Well, she's written a book about that, right? Mm -hmm. Her That's book it. just came out, mm -hmm. Enlisting the Faith. Um, it was released, I think, in November of 2017 with Harvard University Press. We're very timely with yes. her. And when and where will that presentation be? So it'll be in Purdue Hall mm -hmm. in room 156 mm -hmm. on February 1st. So okay. it's a Thursday. So the that's the first thing, February 1st. first event, yes. Great. Now, many community members know Dr. Clara Small, who mm -hmm. taught here for, I think, about 20 or 36 years, actually, mm -hmm. um, retiring in 2014. Mm -hmm. She's the keynote speaker this year. Um, you know, she's sort of a legacy in her own time, um, yeah. very well thought of by our community. Mm -hmm. What is her topic going to be? She'll be speaking about um, African Americans who fought during the Civil War and also how their experiences were as veterans. So she'll be talking about their valor, their courageousness, and then also what their lives were like in the preceding years. Mm -hmm. You know, I always th thought about that when I heard that African Americans from the South fought for the South. Well, it's interesting. So they weren't actually enlisted in the Confederate Is Army. Is that right? Right. Um, but they were forced to dig ditches and do the manual labor that the Confederates didn't Wanted them do. to do. Yeah. Uh, and didn't want to do themselves. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah. Right. So I know Dr. Small, Small has uh, written extensively about that, right? Mm -hmm. She's written and co-written many books um, about African Americans who fought in the Civil War, black activists, as well as veterans. Mm -hmm. When and where will Dr. Small be speaking? So this will be a week after Dr. Stahl's okay. lecture. It'll be February 8th, also a Thursday, okay. and in the same room. And well, Purdue we can Hall remember this then. Stahl, small, first yep. and eighth. Yep, okay, exactly. Okay, very same good. Same room. Good. Now, one of my favorite parts is the soul food dinner. Mm -hmm. um, and when will that be? And will you have any kind of entertainment? Well, tell us a little bit about that. So the SU soul food dinner will take place on February 9th at 7 p.m., there in the SU Commons. Mm -hmm. That's one of my favorite things. Yeah. And the entertainment is Bernard Sweetney, is that right? Yes. So and he's a, re a renowned jazz drummer. Yeah. And he is, um, he's been an, an incredible staple of the jazz world since the 1960s. And I think he's played here almost every one of the, the soul mm -hmm. food dinners. Mm -hmm. um, I've certainly seen him for the last couple of years, I think. Now, he has been all around the world, though. He's played with some pretty famous people, is that right? He's played with Shirley Horn and Roberta Flack and many, many others. 
that that's always fun to see and, and that yeah. dinner is amazing and it's pretty inexpensive too um, mm -hmm. I think you might know the the prices for adults mm -hmm. and children and what and it's the February 9th did you say for adults the soul food dinner costs 1350 and then for children six years and under it's 815 and that's all you can eat, and it is amazing it's incredible food. food. It really is amazing food. Um, later, that particular evening, I know the SU Gospel Choir is going to perform. Mm -hmm. Now, is that going to be in the same place, or you know, right there in the Commons, or do you go over to Holloway Hall for it? So they'll be performing at the Grary um, Center, which is there very close by. I mean, mm -hmm. a short walk away. Oh, okay. But it's, it's at about the same time, 7 p.m., Okay. And it is um, going to be fantastic. So you could do both, right? You could come Absolutely. early to the soul food and then walk over to, mm -hmm. to hear the gospel choir. Right. Great. Right. Yeah. We're Terrific. really honored to, to have them again this year. Yeah. They're, they're fantastic. They're, if you haven't heard them, you've missed something. Mm -hmm. You really have. Now, is there a place where someone can go to find out more or all these dates again of what's going on in February? Absolutely. So if you go to the Salisbury website, so mm -hmm. it's salisbury.edu, and then you click on the News and Events tab on the left-hand side, it'll bring up a list of all of these events. And uh, if you don't want to go to the website, you might have a copy of the Panorama, the, the print publication it's that lists all of the... And our local newspapers, the, too. Mm -hmm, and yeah. all of the local newspapers. That's great. Well, thank you so much for being here. We're going to talk um, later to April okay. and uh, find out what's happening after the middle of the month, but I appreciate your being here and telling us all the, about the first of the month. Thank you so much. Uh -huh, absolutely. And now, here's a look at some of the upcoming activities scheduled on the campus in February.
My next guest is Dr. April Logan, here to talk to us about other events happening this February and into March. So welcome back, April. Hi, how are you doing, Susan? Always good to see you. <laughs> nice to see you, Kim. Yes. <laughs> and so we've just been talking to Aston about the first half of February, yes. and you and I are going to talk a little bit about the second half. I understand yeah. there was one person who was scheduled to be there. Yes, uh, the Pulitzer Prize winning poet Yusuf Kumanyaka, mm -hmm. but unfortunately he's having some health issues, oh, so gosh. we have to postpone that reading. But okay. I, mean, I think his, I think he's doing well, but he just needs a little bit more time. So. So do you have something else in its place? Yes, I think we have another. Um, what will be an exciting event, which is we're going to do a documentary screen, screening mm -hmm. um, of the documentary called Another Brother. It's won many, many, many awards. And basically it features the life of an African-American Vietnam veteran uh, named Clarence Fitch. And it really looks at sort of the trials and triumphs that he had abroad, mm -hmm. but also when he returned home to the States and became a political activist. Well, that sounds like it'll fit right in with the theme of oh, the month. I, yeah, absolutely. It's a great snapshot and sort of, uh, you know, powerful personal testimony of that historical moment. So mm -hmm. it should be great. So they'll have the viewing and then will there be discussion afterwards? Yes, we are going to have a discussion. Basically, after the film, we'll invite the audience to share their reflections on the mm -hmm. documentary, uh, the Vietnam War, and they can share those reflections as comments, poetry, or any other forms of expression that they want to have. Uh -huh. And Aston and I together are going to facilitate that. Oh, very good. Well, we haven't talked about where and when the uh, film will be screened. The location and time is the same um, that the reading was, which is going to be uh, February 15th mm -hmm. at 7 p.m. in the Geary Student Union in the Wacomico Room. Okay, very good. Mm -hmm. um, now, February's events conclude with something a little bit more local, but with a real national impact mm -hmm. and that's the Cambridge Uprising panel discussion that's going to take place. Yes. Tell us a little bit about that. Well this is going to be a powerhouse panel because it has uh, two uh, great ex experts on it. One is uh, SU alumna uh, Artura Jackson. Mm -hmm. um, she's one of our own. She got a, a master's degree in history at SU. We're also going to have a nationally recognized uh, well-known uh, scholar on this issue named Peter Levy. He's a professor of political science and history at York University. And then we're also going to be joined by um, Philadelphia police detective Lawrence uh, McMillan, you mm -hmm. know, to sort of make that connection between the past and the history. That's why it's mm -hmm. the, the title of the event is, you know, looking back, moving forward. You know, there's, I hope we'll people come to the event really with those memories mm -hmm. um, to be a part of the uh, yeah. discussion. And actually, um, I, I wasn't alive during that time, but I watched so many documentaries. My mom always really encouraged me to learn about that um, mm -hmm. part of history when I was growing up. So sometimes I feel like <laughs> I was there and I was definitely yeah. inspired by a lot of those uh, movements and activities. What do you think made the events in Cambridge so important? Well, uh, I think there are a number of uh, fascinating uh, uh, details that will come a part of that discussion. But for example, I know a lot of people when they think of uh, 60s civil rights activism, they think it all had to do with access to sort of, you know, uh, you know, public areas, you know, mm -hmm. like the lunch counters right. or shops and that sort of mm -hmm. thing. But in Cambridge, that was really provoked by concerns about discrimination in employment and education. That's what really spurred the uh, grassroots uh, activism uh, mm -hmm. that happened there in Cambridge. So that's mm -hmm. just one of the sort of unique uh, facts uh, of the Cambridge uh, Civil Rights Movement. And also something that I learned recently that apparently it's considered one of the areas that had the longest period of um, military, uh, uh, what is that, like I guess a military presence? Occupation. Because they had, mm -hmm. cause they had the call out the National Guard in mm -hmm. history, in the history of the Civil is Rights that Movement. Right? So I think that speaks to the level of passion of everyone that was involved in that mm -hmm. um, uh, movement and in that struggle. And so we're really going to look deep into those issues. And the, like I said, the panelists are really qualified to do right. that. Right. That would be so interesting. Because I know Peter Levy's written, written quite a few books, one specifically about Cambridge. And Artura, when she was at SU, she looked at gender in the Cambridge Civil Rights Movement. Mm -hmm. So it's really going to be a fabulous event. And when is the Cambridge panel discussion taking place? That's going to be on February 27th, also in the Geary Student Union in the Wacomico Room. Okay. Next, in March, mm -hmm. we have a celebrity, as far as I'm concerned, joining uh, our midst, and that is Diane Nash, who contributed so much to the early days of the Civil Rights Movement. Tell yeah. us a little bit about that. Yes, um, you know, absolutely. I think lots of times when we think of the Civil Rights Movement, we think of Dr. Martin Luther King, of course, and other mm -hmm. people, but there really could be more, you know, light shed 
reflected on the women that were the architects of that movement as well. And Diane Nash was certainly one of those um, people. And so she's going to come to campus um, on Wednesday, March 28th at 7 p.m. And she's going to be speaking in our new, uh, it's called the Geary Academic Commons, which is basically our library mm -hmm. um, in the assembly hall there. I was telling you before we started talking on air, um, I visited the Rosa Parks Museum last year. And so I remember the stories about Diane Nash and how she was working as a, she was a student at Fisk University mm -hmm. and she helped organize the Freedom uh, Rides. Is that what they're called, the Freedom yes. Rides? Mm -hmm. And I remember that the Attorney General, and I believe it was Kennedy, Robert Kennedy at the time, called her and said, I'm gonna to have to ask you to step down and, and not do this because I, mm. I fear that violence is going to ensue. And so she turned back to him and said, sir, it will be a sad day when violence can overcome nonviolence. Wow. And he thought to himself, this is an 18 or 19 <laughs> year old person. How can she be this wise? Right. And you know, they were very successful. Mm -hmm. Though they were met with some violence, certainly right. along the way. Right. I mean, it's so hard for me to even envision that there was a day when African Americans and, and whites couldn't sit at a lunch counter together. Right, right. You well, and, that, and that's why I think African American History Month is so important because it gives us the opportunity to you know basically treasure and preserve that history but also mm -hmm. reflect on you know how far we've come and mm -hmm. you know how much further we need to go but I think especially for students to be inspired like you said an 18 or 19 year old right. leading on the cause you know coordinating the freedom right. ride and she worked being, with Martin Luther yeah, King as well because exactly. they were there in Montgomery being so outspoken and thoughtful and engaged in these political issues and that's really what we try to accomplish at SU is that sort of civic engagement and understanding of these histories diversity and inclusion exactly. So I think that's our hope is that you know people will walk away with an understanding of, the, of that history, but also be inspired. And I see that as sort of a um, you know bridge event between African American History Month and Women's Month, Women's History Month, which is in March. Mm -hmm. So that's another reason so, why it's great to invite. Right. Her. When when and where will we see Diane Nash? That's, I really can't miss that one. Sure. That's going to be Wednesday, March twenty eighth mm -hmm. at seven p.m. in the Geary um, Academic Commons, which I said is the library in the mm -hmm. Assembly Hall, which okay. is on the, very, fourth floor. the fourth floor. Right. That's a good space for that because right. I, I hope <laughs> that many, many people will attend oh, that. So. I'm sure, so now, you know, the African American History Month committee that you and, and Aston chair, I mean, has done a wonderful job in coming up with all kinds of great events during the month. But you might want to uh, tell me of other organizations on campus that have also contributed to the celebration. So yes, this year's program really took a village and um, all the people involved, let me make sure I don't forget anyone, the offices of the president, provost, uh, the Fulton School Dean, uh, the Office of Multicultural Student Services, mm -hmm. the Honors College, uh, uh, the Departments of History, English, and Social Work, uh, the Teaching uh, Transformation and Social Justice at SU. It's a faculty learning community. I always forget. Um, also, the NAB Research Center, which everyone's very familiar mm -hmm. with, and also the Institute for Public Affairs and Civic Engagement. Riders on the Shore, and also Dining Services. And uh, I apologize. I really hope I didn't forget anyone. But That is a village. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we all work together. It all must take time. a long time to put this together. Well, basically, you know, when the, you know, once when one larger, ends, yeah, you start April a new. May, we start the planning and the do. coordination. But, you know, it's, it's a labor of love. We all, you know, are excited mm -hmm. to do it, and we are happy to do it for well, those Well, I'm very excited about a lot of those people that you're bringing to campus this year, and thank right. you for all your work in that. Oh, so thank you for having mm -hmm. us every year. Absolutely. <laughs> thank you. And now here's a look at the other things happening on campus in both February and March.
I'd like to thank my guests, Dr. April Logan, Assistant Professor of English, and Dr. Aston Gonzalez, Assistant Professor of History, co-chairs of SU's African American History Month Committee. I'm Susan Purnell, and this has been Salisbury University On The Air. Thank you for watching.